Definitely. So nice. what happened to your arm? Oh, mate, I broke my elbow. What broke my elbow. What? Definitely wasn't fighting. Uh, <laughs> playing football. Uh, so, mate, I don't even play, like, football. To, American like, football is a football football. No, no, it's just actual, oh, right. like, normal football. American football. Oh, nah, right. just normal football, man. So, How do you mind to do that? Mate, I, it wasn't even worth it. I was playing seven aside with my right, dad right. at football. So, basically, somebody's played me, like, a shit right. pass, and it, the ball was going out. You know that way it was sevens, wasn't it? I was just going to leave right. it going out. And then somebody's going, like, oh, you can get that. So, yeah. I've been sprinting to get it. I right. kept the ball in and because I've been running fast right. like my knees basically like get caught in the, the ground right and my, like that I, my knee like buckled in the way right. but basically there's me. concrete behind like the, the kind of pitch behind the right. goal right. Right. so I've been running to keep the ball in my knees buckled and because I've been running fast it's caused me to like fucking like, your right off, uh, top, of my, top over so see that weight obviously you know it's agony, but it's mate, so so I mean see, see that I was about to say you'll know what it's like being hurt I, no, <laughs> I've, I've, I've broke my shoulder while he was a wee boy I thought I can help that, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't remember it. But aye, aye. Right now, you well, mine's just my elbow. It wasn't even my shoulder. No, 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 What's that? Have you got a surgery on an audio? Nah, mate, nah. Just, just it heals itself. Heals they it said right. about four to six weeks in the right, sling. So I broke the bone that's like responsible for rotating right, your arm. Right, right, I know what you mean. Aye, so right, so the first kind of week or so it was just plastered, but I can right. move it like kind of all right now. It's just see, try to twist it. I can't that's really. A bit sore, aye. aye, but see, see when I first fell, mate, see that way and you're kind of winded with the uh-huh, pain. Aye. And I thought I, I was scared that it was my knee. Because uh-huh, I was like, oh, fuck my knee. And then I wasn't even thinking I looked down at my arm and it was all, aye, it was oh, a bit, aye, it was a bit kind of gammy, man. I think so. you must have got fucking, you must have been in shock, and I know it was, mate. That's what happens. And you're going shocking. This obviously fucking real as fuck, mate. I I didn't realise like just breaking a bone how it would actually kind of make you feel. Yeah, because see when it first happened, mate. Oh my god, I was just. I've been lucky. I've never broke anything. Have I've you never, not? Injured, no. I've been injured over that, but I've never yeah, broke yeah. anything. Mate. You've never broke your nose or anything? No, I've never broke my nose. Have you not? Nose. I've never bust my nose. Have ever. you? I've never bust. You my must nose. have been a good boxer, mate. No, I was alright. I was just, I was just tough. That's all I was. was yeah, tough, yeah. You know? <laughs> I was just tough. I've been cut hundreds of times under my. You can probably see all my scars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been cut, but apart from that. Never been injured, yeah, yeah. Like that, which I'm fortunate. Yeah, yeah. But well, that's it. I'm, I'm, I'm honestly, I was really excited to have you no, in, mate, because no, obviously, like you said, you've done kind of boxing podcasts. This obviously yeah, isn't. Think, this is no, more. That's, that's good, I, it's more like about your kind of life story no, and, and your kind of journey as well. And it's also for a perspective of I don't really know that much about. I do right. like watching boxing, no, but right. thank you very much. Well, I, I no, appreciate it, mate. Cheers. Um, like I said, I don't really know much about boxing, but that's why I am. I'm excited no, to have you in and actually find out a wee bit more about it, mate. What's happening, people? Welcome back to episode six of the Dawn Diaries, and today we have a very special guest on Cash Fruit. Cash, thanks for coming in the studio, mate. I really appreciate it. No, thanks for having me. Thanks a lot. No worries at all, mate. Now, Cash, with every guest, I basically just like to go from the start, from the right. beginning. All right. So, just where you're born, your kind of upbringing, what you were like as a as a kid. So, I was born in Pakistan, Gujarawali, and uh, we emigrated over to Glasgow, Scotland. I was about five, okay. and uh, my upbringing was quite good, you know. I mean, and uh, I wasn't a troublemaker or anything, so. Uh, yeah, I was, uh, was quiet growing up, and uh, yeah, I was always been a wee guy, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> wee guy. And wh- why was it that your family emigrated over here? Well, my mum wanted a better life for us, so she came over here and well, brought me, my big brother, my wee brother, so we came here for a better life, and uh, and we've been here since 2002, so it's been, what, 21 years we've been here, so it's been home to me, Glasgow. Yeah, and so, so you don't really kind of remember much about Pakistan? I can't, no, I can't, I can still remember my, well, I went back after, what, 13 odd years, um, just in just in January there, and uh, I can still remember my face, everyone's face. You know, you can remember wee bits and bobs of that, but things just look a wee bit small now. Yeah. When you left, over things were a bit massive, mm-hmm. and now things are a wee bit small when you went, when I went back. Yeah. And when you emigrated, then did yeah. you come straight from Pakistan to Glasgow? Yeah. So we, no, so we went to London first, Croydon. Okay. We stayed there for a month, and we moved up here up okay. in Glasgow, and uh, yeah, we've been there all our lives. That side of Glasgow as well in the west the west end. Okay. Yeah. And. What about then, kind of in school? What kind of person were you? Were you in school? Were you quite quiet? Were you quite shy? Or so growing up in uh, in when I went to primary school here, I started about primary four, and uh, obviously English wasn't our first language, so that was uh, very difficult for us to pick English up. But as time went off, it became became a, it's my first language now, English, and um, you know, growing up, I was very very quiet in school, 
I was never a troublemaker. I was listening to the teacher what she told me, and uh, I was really in trouble. And um, but I was always active. I was doing something, playing football, doing something, playing cr- cricket. I was always active, you know. And uh, that's where that's where I've always been like, you know, I mean, as a boy. And yeah. till this day, I'm still active. You know, I mean, I'm still waking up in the morning, running, keep myself moving. You know. Yeah, but I always see you in the gym, and you're always you're always doing something, man. Always running on the treadmill, and yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> definitely. I mean, I've obviously still kept the habits. Now, even after retirement, I've still kept the morning run. I'm doing the weights and uh, so I just keep myself uh, always active, you know. Yeah, good stuff, man. Good stuff. And what what kind of age was it? Because I've obviously I've been doing my research into yeah. you and I seen that you didn't actually kind of start boxing until what maybe fourteen, fifteen? Is that correct? Yeah. So I took a uh, boxing age of fourteen, and uh, my friend took me down the gym where I stay up in White Inch uh, Community Centre. He said, "Come down just to see what boxing is like," you know. And I was interested. I was interested in football. Mm-hmm. I want to be a football player. It's like obviously any kid growing up in Glasgow. And um, obviously the first night I went and uh, that was it. You know, the trainer told me to come back the next night, big and comes and I'll, I'll go all excited. And uh, that was it. My, in my career, obviously, that that's when my boxing journey began, you know. Yeah. I just came back every night and that was it. Yeah, so you, you'd you literally had no prior boxing experience up until this point. It was purely just football. Your pal thought, come down to this and you just fell in love with it. And that was it, you know, to be honest, I didn't even watch boxing and... Uh, you know, all I knew was obviously Muhammad Ali. Mm-hmm. That's what only we knew. Because mom and dad obviously watched him growing up. But apart from that, we knew, I knew no one in boxing. I knew nothing about it. All I knew was football. Mm-hmm. And um, that was it, you know. And uh, then boxing, obviously, that became my passion. and became my sport I wanted to do. And, uh, you know, I dedicated my life to it. And uh, that was it, you know. And obviously, it was, it's a good thing my friend took me down. And boxing came natural to me. You know, I never had to really. I did work really hard, but it became second nature to me when I when I took the boxing up. Yeah, and when when you actually started the boxing, was yeah. it a was it a case of just something clicked and you thought this is what I know that I want to do, or was it more just a kind of hobby at this point? You know, at the beginning it was a hobby, and this is this is a by the beginning it was a hobby. It was I just wanted to have fight, win medals, and uh, represent my country, Scotland, and uh, you know, and uh, then obviously at the time my trainer was saying you can make you can make this a career. And uh, that's where I started looking at things, you know, and how you can make money out through boxing, which we see, I don't come from a family that's through sport. No one's, my, even my uncles, cousins, no one's ever done sport. Mm-hmm. And uh, my, uncle, uh, my, my trainer used to tell me, listen, keep keep going where you're going, keep dedicating yourself. And um, you can make this as your career, make this as your job, you know. So after after kind of how many years was he saying that, that you really can make this a career? So I think as soon as I always had my first fight straight, he's like, I think you've got something. I think you could be a handful of kids that can potentially go and do something. I think it was just wasn't obviously my skill. It was just my dedication towards the sport. I was really dedicated. You know, I mean, I was always in the gym, no matter what time of the year it was, summer, Christmas or Halloween, bonfire. I was always in the gym. Okay. And uh, I was always there three days a week. You know, and uh, you know, and and I was really hung around. I was always in the gym. So my trainer was like, I just keep going where you're going. And it's obviously it's difficult when you're young as well. Yeah. You want to be hanging about outside, but. I was always in the gym. Okay, so that, that yeah, because well, exactly like you said, and kind of touching yeah. on the football, there's so many young guys in Scotland that, that are amazing at football and very good at it, but then you've got those kind of temptations of, like you said, going out, partying, just kind of getting distracted. But for yourself, it was just pure, sheer dedication from the get-go. No, I was, because see, boxing is an individual sport. You know, you got, it's not like football, you know what I mean? You can, football, if you're tired, you can pass a ball. See, boxing, you need to be dedicated. Mm-hmm. And, uh, if I lose, I'm losing myself, you know, and I can't point fingers at him or someone else, but well, I've got myself to blame, you know, so this is the reason I was very dedicated in boxing and um, I gave everything, I gave 110%, everything I trained, dieted, ran, everything I did, gave 110%, so, you know, and um, so that's the way I had the mindset going into boxing. I was like, I'm going to give this all my all and see where I can go from here. And and do you think that is like the key reason for your success, just to how, how determined and dedicated you were to it? I think my mindset and obviously everything you said there, with my mindset and everything, I gave everything into boxing, you know, and, uh, you know, obviously I wanted to give it a go anyway. See if I never made it, at least I gave it a go. I never had no regrets, but, mm-hmm. you know, the toughest part obviously is your life is between 14 to maybe 20 or nine, 19 years. That's probably the toughest part of your life because you get distracted, hanging about, doing things that you maybe just work comes in your life that you can just distract, distract away and that. So, but all I've always done was boxing, mm-hmm. and that's all I've wanted to do. Okay. And now, listen, I, I, like I said to you before the podcast yeah. started, I love watching boxing. Yeah. I don't really know too much about it. To, so to maybe the muggles out yeah. there, they don't maybe understand it. When you had your first fight, right. what kind of level was it that you were getting into? Was it amateur? Or? So it was amateur with the boxing of Scotland. You know, it's no, it was no white-collar stuff. It was just proper, proper amateur boxing. 
And um, I, I had my first fight in Linwood, I think. That's where I had my first fight. I still remember it. Where? In Linwood. All right, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. I was in a pub somewhere. I forgot the name. This is years ago. I've still got a trophy in my house. And uh, and see, from that day, I was like, I want to be a boxer. I don't care whatever it takes, you know. And uh, and I want to make this as my career. Yeah. You know, and, and I want to try to dedicate much as I can myself to this game. Okay. And what, could, could I ask then yeah. what your family were thinking about that? Were, have they been supportive of that? Or were, when, I mean, I just think yeah. if I came home and told my mum and dad, I actually, do you know what? Yeah. See, when I was younger and I didn't have a clue about what right. I wanted to do, I'd never even thought before. And I came home and told my mum and dad I was going to be a cage fighter. And they're like, <laughs> eh, <laughs> what are you? So what, what was that like for your parents when you came and said, listen, I want to do this as a career? You know, at the, at the beginning, my mom always says, my mom's always bored me. She's done everything for me. You know, she's always bored me with my cooking, my washing, everything. She's always, she's always bored me through my amateur and professional career. But my father was like, guys, this is a waste of time. He used to always tell me until I always started to turn professional, start making money. Mm -hmm. But before when I was amateur, I was just, I mean, represent the country, Scotland, you know what I mean? He was just, you're wasting your time. You know, you better go and pursue a career somewhere, doing something. But I was like, ah, you know what? I'm gonna keep doing my own thing, you know. Yeah, but never they never really forced me to quit it. But just this, you're just wasting your time. My mom never, but my dad did. Okay, and what did did your dad have like a career in mind for you, or no? He wanted me always to get into work. He wanted me to find a work and get into that type of career. Just choose any career in work wise. But I wanted to be obviously an athlete, boxing wise, you know. And uh, it's a quick success, you know. I mean, you have quick success through boxing. Always knew my, which might take you working. About 10, 15 years, you know, in boxing, you can maybe then maybe five, six years, you know. Yeah. And which obviously it did for me as well. Yeah. And so when, when you obviously start kind of then picking up fights, you obviously picked up a lot of wins yeah. as well. When you were first starting, I know obviously you said your first uh, yeah. fight was in, in a pub, was yeah, it? Yeah, that's right. I was in a pub island where that's was right. And, and was it those kind of similar venues? Like, was there crowds at the fights or? No, there was, you know, there's a, it's a night out for basically for people, you know, and they come watch the amateurs. You know, and uh, you basically, you basically, as soon as you're a kid, you're only doing for a medal. That's all you're doing for. You don't really think about, oh, I'm going to go and make money and that. You're just doing it just to win medals and get the national get the national score. That's your mindset. You mm -hmm. don't really think about this, I'm going to end up making money. This, as soon as you're young, just think about just winning. That's all you think about. Yeah. Winning and winning medals, that's what you're thinking about at the moment. So so after that, after that first win then, yeah. how, how did that kind of feel? And did you, did you know in your head that you were going to go on to be successful, you were going to go professional then at, at some point? You know what, it's, uh, obviously I had a long road, you know what I mean, I just, uh, you know, some people quit after 20 fights, some people quit after 15, 15 fights, some people can quit after one fight, but I always had the mindset, you know what, I don't care what happens, I'm going to still, I'm going to keep doing this. Yeah. You know, unless, unless injury stops me or something, but, but I had the mindset, you know, I've had this fight and I'm going to keep, continue to keep doing this, you know, yeah. no matter what it takes. And so then what, what stage does it go from you're an amateur boxer then into professional? So, see amateur, so uh, the guy who I was training at the beginning, his name is Bobby McDonald, oh, sorry, Bobby McDonald, Sherbo. He had, I had six fights with him. Then I stopped, obviously. He, he chucked it and I had to move to a different club up in Chelsea. So I was taking the bus from Scots into Shelton every three, four days a week, you know what I mean? And that would take me an hour and a half every three, four days a week. So so he would that he was that was a trainer that took me to the next level. Okay. Which I started representing Scotland, started going to Russia, going to Holland and that. So I started doing that. Then I think he passed away in 2015. Then I just thought after that, I'm gonna chuck boxing or turn professional, which I turned professional, you know what I mean? Yeah. So you you were gonna actually chuck boxing? I this was in 2015 because both my trainers passed away. Uh, Bobby McDermott, the guy who brought me into boxing, he died with cancer. The other my trainer, he passed within four or five months with hernia, mm. a leak in his back or something. And um, then I was just gonna chuck it, you know what I mean? And just get back into work or something and uh, and just give it a rest, you know what I mean? Then that was it, you know? Is that, uh, so is that because you were just so close to them and it, it was that, did you almost kind of see them as like a kind of father figure or? No, I didn't, you know what? They were my mentors. They got me into the box, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Gave me a reason why I should do this. Because, um, you know, you got to have a reason why you're doing this sport, you know, main boxing, because it's tough. Yeah. It's no, because the only way you get paid is through boxing is you're fighting. You don't get really get it any other way, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You have to fight to basically get paid. And uh, you, might, you might not get paid, you might not make profit until you maybe, what, seven, eight years into your career, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I didn't make, obviously, profit until I was, I took boxing up 2010, then I started, didn't make decent money when I was, I was 18. Mm -hmm. when I won the British title so it took me 8 years you know what I mean and I was 22 years old and started making really decent enough money for myself so so he gave me a reason why I should do it and mm -hmm. obviously I looked at them as the guys that I looked up to and they were my mentors you know
Yeah, I, it, it, it's more like the actual kind of love for, for the sport at first. Obviously, you're not really getting any paid for it. And Aye. My, my, probably what I've always thought of as well for if somebody that's never boxed, Aye. is there anything in your head that you're thinking, like, I'm getting paid to get punched in the face almost? Or are you not really thinking about that? You're just thinking about the love for the sport? You know, as, uh, you love the sport, but it does eventually come a career for you, you know what I mean? Obviously, you need two years of career, eating wise and. Uh, Training wise, everything you have to treat as a career, and uh, but I never looked at you getting punched in the face. You know, you never look at that way. You're trying to punch other guys, so you look at your punch. The guy, he's not punching you. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah, so if you're you good got, enough, you're not uh, going to get enough, punched. You gotta look at that way. You're punching him. He's not punching you. Yeah, yeah. And uh, but that's that's just the way it is. You know, people go into offices. I wake up in the morning, run, and boxes wake up in the morning, run. Then then the gym at night time. So that's these are the working hours. You know. Yeah. Yeah, and before we actually started the podcast, I was yeah. asking you if you've ever broken your nose or anything, and you've not. So you must be you must be a good boxer. And I was just tough to be honest. That's all I was, you know. <laughs> and uh, I've been cut a few times, but apart from that, I've never broken my nose or nothing. Yeah, no real issues. Nah. So you'd mentioned there before as well. So you went to Russia. Was that with actually Scotland that you went? With? So I represented Scotland's amateur about ten times. I think I went to Russia, Holland, Bosnia, Serbia, and Ireland, mm-hmm. and I represented Scotland the British three times. So, and I won the national t- uh, title three times in Scotland. So. You know, I had a decent amateur career, then I turned professional at 19, mm-hmm. which I was quite young, you know. The guy who made me turn professional was uh, Craig Doherty. Okay. He was a professional himself years ago. He won the Cornwall title and uh, he advised me to turn over, turn over. And I took his advice and turned over. You know, I mean, at that time, I thought it was the worst decision I ever made. Mm. You know, but it turned out to be the best. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And when you are, just so that I understand that a wee yeah. bit better then, when you're an amateur boxer, were you doing a, another job as well at the same time? Or? No, to be honest, I've always done, I've always, I've always been full-time, you know what I mean? Okay. I've always been full-time so, boxing. Okay, so, so despite you being an amateur boxer, nah. that still was your full-time Aye, that gig? Just, right? I woke okay. up one run and I was in the gym at night time, that was it. Right, okay. You know, I've, always, uh, I've had old jobs in the year, but boxing's all of made my money through boxing. Yeah. Okay. I've made every penny through boxing, no. Okay. That, so been, that. Yeah. That's interesting. Sorry, I didn't. I didn't realize that. I thought that when you were maybe an amateur, I thought it was a case of amateur boxer. You maybe need to work some no, other you, job. You can't. You know what? You can. There's yep. nothing. There's boy. Boys can. But I'm, I'm just like, you know what? I'm gonna give this hundred percent. I can. I wanna be good at what I do. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna be the best at it. So I'm gonna give a hundred ten percent. You know what I mean? So that's interesting then, because you probably sacrificed at that time, probably making like more money, just no, I, so that you could yeah. have that extra time to just fully dedicate yourself to it, rather than maybe having another job. But then it's taking a wee bit of, of time away from what you what it is that you actually want to do. No, hundred percent. Because see, by the time I made obviously money was when I was trying to. It took well, it took me like three, four, well, eight years into my career. You know, I could be making money doing something else. You know what I mean? In picking a career up depending on where I was but but like I said I had my mindset I want to be a boxer you know what I mean yeah. and I knew there was obviously Paul Gold at the end, end of the tunnel mm-hmm. so that's the mindset I had but you know if, if I had to look back obviously I would change things I have regrets obviously a lot of things but you know I, that's the way it was you know and uh, just uh, you, at that time you think you know better but just the way things are did you say there that you would change things you know you would but it's just uh, but you have to live with regrets I always say that you have to because if you don't, you've done to everything right. That means, which, uh, you know, I would obviously change things up a wee bit if I have to go back. But like, like what, what would you change? You know, obviously I would probably pick, obviously like yourself, probably do a career when I was amateur boxing because you got a lot of time in your hand, you know what I mean, when you're young. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I would just done amateur boxing, picked a career up, you know what I mean? Because once you retire, you got to get into something. Yeah. And see, even if you make a lot of money, you still need what you're doing with it. And obviously, if you don't do nothing with that money, it's going to run out eventually because mm-hmm. you've got bills to pay eventually. Yeah. Because you know, that's 15, 16 year boy that's, you know what I mean? They've got no bills or nothing because as you get older, time changes every time, you know what I mean? Yeah. You've got new responsibilities every couple of years. So if you've got, you're 21, you've not got a house, but next year you've got a house. So you've got new responsibilities every year. So car, everything. So, you know, so if I had if I had to go back, I'd probably change, change, pick me, pick a career up that can go back to after retired, you know what I mean? Yeah. But I like what you also said there as well. I do think I, I agree with you. You need to live with the grits because I think without maybe, maybe not the grits, yeah. but without actually failures, then yeah, I, you wouldn't actually kind of learn or grow as no, a person. No, 100%, you're right. No, 100%, yeah. you're right. Yeah. I don't know. No, I like that. Okay, so yeah. then you've, I mean, you've got an amazing record. Yeah. And pref- so see see your record, is it right. 16, you've had 17 fights, yeah, that's 16 right. wins, one defeat. That's right. We'll yeah. get into that defeat Aye, right. <laughs> a wee bit later down Aye. the line. Aye. But is that then is your amateur fights included in that record? No, as well? you don't see amateur it's just that's basically apprenticeship. You gotta look at that. Oh, way. right, okay. That's basically apprenticeship. See once you turn professional, this is where this is where things kick on. Mm-hmm. This is where it comes real real things, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. This is where it comes, you know what I mean, where professional 
You know, you don't remember an amateur, do you? Really? You yeah. really remember a professional. I'm talking about even you, Wisin. You probably know all the great professional players like Mayweather and that. You don't really know his amateur career, do you have Mayweather's? No. But you know his professional career, but professional career is where you make really your stamp in boxing, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. This is uh, this is where you make money and make a name for yourself. Okay. If you're going to do something, you know, you do have a small period of time in your life. You got to do what you got to do in that period, you know. And see, boxing, you've not got forever. You have got a small time period. And you better do things while you're young, you know. Yeah. And what what would you say then was the most noticeable jump from being an amateur to a professional? Because that, that decision that you made to then go professional, did did something feel different? Or was it just to you, it just felt like you were doing the same shit, but to a higher level? It's the same stuff, but it's, you're, doing more, you're more, a bit more dedicated mm. to everything you're doing. Obviously, it's, uh, the, see first couple of fights, you're only doing four or six rounders. But you're doing more long rounds and you're eating well, you're running harder, you're doing longer sprints. So things are, you're basically doubling everything you're doing, doubling it. Yeah. Because amateur is only three threes. Okay. Three, three minute rounds and mm -hmm. uh, three rounds only, you know what I mean? And professional, it goes up to four, six, eight, then 10, then 12. So you have to be more dedicated with everything you're doing. Yeah. Diet, running, sleeping, everything. Well, if you do it properly, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's the way I done it, you know what I mean? Yeah. But as you hit Tyler and a professional, you gotta be really, really dedicated. I'm talking about really dedicated. Yeah. If you do it properly, you know what I mean? Even Friday nights when you're about 10 o'clock, you know, waking up the next morning, start your day running, sprinting, whatever, and uh, you eat well, you don't need to go near chocolates, anything. So you have to have a diet plan so you can't down every every week, you know what I mean, weight wise. Yeah. So just I uh, staying a hundred percent committed and dedicated to it. you see you just see boxing, you've got an end goal and then you've got a fight. You're you need to make weight and you've got a fight that you need to be ready for that no fight no matter what. Yeah. And it's down to you to be it's down to you whether you've put the work in or not. I mean Well, like you said, it is down to you because I think that there'll be plenty of maybe young boys listening to this that have maybe been in a kind of similar position to you, but maybe you know those temptations are there then it, it's kind of hard for them to stay 100% on track someday this is going to sound like the right. most generic thing ever right but someday that I always used to look up right. to was Conor McGregor right, and right, just because it. of his kind of mindset to everything back in the day right. but whereas now I feel like he's very very different obviously no, right. those temptations are there but Conor McGregor always used to talk about that the fact that he was obsessed with it it was just his absolute life and that's why he was so successful no, 100%, I know, I know. but now he's kind of changed a wee bit and you I can just, see the, the difference with him, yeah. He's got plenty of money now, you know. He doesn't really need, to be honest, he doesn't need to really do MMA anymore. Well, sorry, UFC, he doesn't need mm. to really do anymore. He's probably making more money outside than he is doing inside the cage now, yeah. No, you know, and he's probably he probably doesn't have the dedication as, as he probably did when he wasn't make doing that. Well, see, see, with yourself, then because it'll, it'll be a, a similar situation, but you were kind of doing it not to survive, yeah, yeah? like yeah. to survive. This is how you were actually going to make money, so no, it's I, like. I need to go out there and make sure that I'm going out to win. Whereas when you look at a situation, it's like you're not probably as driven as much anymore. No, because no, 100%. He's, yeah, he's got all that. Yeah, I know. I was like that as well. Obviously, right through my right to my last professional fight, I was like, you know what? I gotta make this count. You know, I've got a small period, um, time period. You know, because see, once this period goes, you're not gonna get this again. Mm -hmm. You know, like obviously, they say you only live once, but you're only, you're only young once as well. So you gotta make this bit count. You know, so I was like, I'm gonna get this hundred ten percent. I'm just unfortunate how things ended in my boxing career, but you know, and uh, but I, g I gave a hundred ten percent, you know, and if just I was just unlucky how things ended. Yeah. So the, the professional fights and they start building up and building up. You're on a win streak yeah, after I win streak. How how did you feel in that time where every fight you went into you were winning? You know, it was a it was a journey for me. Every every day was every. I don't know explain to you, but my life was a big sign for me. My life's always up then down. You get a fight, then you go. You, you get a few weeks rest then you're back up again you get a fight date then you look forward to the next fight date media to media is everything and training you're leading up to it leading up to it you get a fight then you're back down again then you know and it was always exciting for me you know boxing mm. and uh, I've always even through my amateur I was always excited you know I mean for training fights everything else so I was always I've always had excitement growing up and, and through my life you know what I mean I've always had that you know and uh you know, and obviously things are a bit quiet, you know, because you've not got a next fight date, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, the fighting that, that you were talking about yeah. there, without sounding kind of too, kind of cliche or anything, but was that like you were kind of form a, it sounds like you were kind of form a drugs almost. Like it's like you're on a high with the boxing and it's what you're kind of chasing. Then when you've not really got it, yeah, and you've not got a fight lined up, it's a wee bit kind of calmed down and down. But then it's 100%. like, I need that fight. I need that next hit almost. It's a purpose, you know, when I mean, you're looking at it, it's like, I've never drank or, I've never drank or took drugs or anything, so I know what that feels like, but 
you know, you're always looking for the next excitement, always excitement because you're always excited to get a fight date. You train towards it five, six, seven, eight weeks. And uh, then you're looking forward to the night before you're getting weighed in. You're making weight. That's all exciting, you know what I mean? And then uh, you fight at night. That's when the exciting as well. And after after you had the fight, you get on a high for the next couple of days and you go back down again. Mm-hmm. Then you wait to go a few weeks or months, whatever it is, and you get a fight day announced again. You're excited again. Mm-hmm. And that's how every athlete feels. You know, and see once that stops, there's no you feel like they've not got purpose anymore. You know? Okay. Okay. No, it's interesting that obviously you said that you've never taken drugs or, or drank yeah. alcohol, but it does sound like that. The fact that it's like up one second. You know, down you can probably next. say it's like uh I don't know what high feels like, but so you can probably say it's like a drug or yeah. a boxer. Boxer is winning it's like a drug and a fight night's a drug for him, you know. Yeah. And then so you've talked about that excitement. Right. Then obviously for the fights, let me ask you an opposite right. question. Were you nervous going into fights? Were you nervous before walking out? What right. to me, obviously, I've, I couldn't honestly fight sleep, yeah. mate. Right? <laughs> I'm absolutely, I couldn't do that. But to me, I just imagine walking out to a boxing ring, I would be bricking it. You know what? It's, uh, I, w- I was the same to be honest. I was. Were you? It just see as time goes, you get more experience. You start under control of your nerves. But honestly, the I was really, really nervous, you know. And uh, in my first amateur fight. Right to my last professional fight, I was very, very nervous. Really? Aye, and uh, see, once you're in the ring, it disappears soon, soon as, uh, as soon as you go in the ring. Really? Why is one shit Because you've been doing it for the last eight, nine weeks. You've been doing it since you're a 14 year boy. You know, you're in the gym sparring, and it's just sip. See, once soon before the bell rings, you're in, you're in the zone now. That's it, it's over. So, so it's, uh, it's a case of just flicking that it's switch? Just and- it's just a night before mm-hmm. you're thinking about it. I'm, well, some people are different. Some people just get nervous on the night. But I'm just the night before I get thinking about it. Then on the day I'm get nervous everything and uh, and when the fight night comes I get really nervous and you do the walkout and once you're there you're in the ring you feel you know why you feel a million dollars you know what I mean can you can you sleep before the night you, you know what I, I was good I was sleeping uh, at the um, beginning of my career but see as as I went up the levels I don't know whether it was just maybe nerves maybe I was nervous maybe I was th- overthinking things but you know you'd think about it when you get beat what was this and that because you're final final people. You know, obviously you don't get humiliated, you know what I mean, from people, so, you know, and uh, it did obviously come to a point I was sleeping the wake up and you start thinking, about well, you're fine next day. And, um, you know, you would, you would get nervous, you know. My sleeping was alright, it wasn't it wasn't great, I would say. I, mm-hmm. I wouldn't get really knocked out for the whole, whole night, you know. Yeah, um, see the, the kind of nervous aspect right. then, what was it in specific? Was it anything in specific you were nervous about? Was it walking out in front to a crowd? Or was it the fact that you were like, I could get knocked out here, which is embarrassing? Or? No, I think it was more of getting beat. You know that? It wasn't even about getting knocked out, getting hurt, getting caught, breaking my nose, breaking whatever it is. It's just about getting beat. I think that's what you're nervous about. Yeah. Just getting beat. Because mm-hmm. I think uh, it's, uh, it's a bad, it's not a nice feeling. You know, I've been beat a few times, so as amateur and prof- once as a professional and it's not really a nice feeling, you know. Yeah. And that's what you're nervous about. You just want to win and keep climbing up the ladder and boxing. But see, once you get beat, you go down, you go back down again, and you climb back back up again. Which, you know, can take a few months, about well, a few years. So I've always been nervous like that. That's the reason I always used to get nervous. Used to overthink things. Yeah. And you're the you're the first kind of sports person that I've had in the podcast, right, and I've been dying to ask somebody nah. about this because it's similar with, with sports. So. Is there a is there a pressure on you when you're in that ring that you know that you've got a big crowd there and people are watching you, or is it a case of you're in the zone you don't even think about it that people are watching you? You know, no, you don't. See, once you're in the ring, you don't think about anything. You just think about your opponent. Okay. You know, that's all you're thinking about, just to win. And you gotta think of how am I gonna get near him. That's what you're thinking about. You're nothing about people around you. See, once you're in the ring, that's it. everything disappears. Mm. Your mindset just on the guy in front of you, and that's it. Yeah, it's really interesting. I think from like an outside perspective of, of somebody watching in in these boxing fights or even football games, like I've always sat there and wondered, are they sitting thinking about us right now? No, or they, they don't just... see you as anybody. I think even football, they don't think about you. They yeah. really don't. See, once you're in, in that bubble, you just think about the opponent. Okay. Because you got a number seven, he's trying to knock you out. Okay. So you, you're really, you're really, your mind's 100% on him, you know what I mean? Yeah. So you forget about what's around you. No, okay. No, that's really interesting. No, it's good to know. I've just, I've always, I've yeah. always wondered that when it, when it comes to, yeah, performing sports and like big arenas and with people watching you. So the fights are racking up and racking right. up. And then this is potentially, well, it will be the biggest fight of your career was right. against Lee McGregor. Right, is that right, correct? Right. Yeah. And where, whereabouts was that held? I think that was in Emirates Arena in right. Glasgow. Oh, right. Okay. Just right. what, just across from Celtic Park? Oh, that's right. Aye. Right. Okay. Yeah. So that was in 2019, I think. And that fight was obviously built up over a year and a half, two years. Yep. And, and uh, what, 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 what was, why, why was the reason that it was built up then so much? 
Was, it, was it a beef between you two? No, I wasn't beef. No, I was in the same Scotland team as them, and we was, you know, we were good friends. And I've just uh, been the same weight and the same obviously in Scotland, which is quite rare. To have the same boy, and we've got belt. He's got Commonwealth either British belt, mm-hmm. and uh, the fight was built up, built up, and uh, and uh, that was the reason. Obviously, things. Well, that's how the fight was. That was the reason it was big. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, that was the reason. And and you, so when you went to Boxley McGregor, you already yeah. had the belt. I belt at this I point. I had the British belt, so I won that all right. So I get to keep the British belt I had. Mm-hmm. So I, I kept that, and uh, I was uh, I defended it three times, and I've got the belt all right. And uh, he was just another defense now. So I was fine for his belt. He was fine for my belt. Right. Okay. How did it? We'll talk about the Lee McGregor fight in a second. But yeah. how, how did it feel winning that that belt, that title? You know what? I was the first, obviously, Pakistani boy to have uh, Pakistani uh, heritage to ever win that belt. So from born and uh, and it was great. You know, I get to keep the belt forever. Yeah, that's amazing. You know, and uh, I should have told you to bring it in. Ah, uh, no, no, no. <laughs> but to be honest, I've kept it away somewhere. Ah, right, okay, no, that's I've fine. kept it away safe and because they're worth a few quid. Ah, right. You know, and, uh, <laughs> and so, we are in Wisho, so, uh, so I've, I've, I've kept it away. So <laughs> I saw so it was it was a great feeling to keep winning the belt. Yeah, you know, I, but I didn't really care about the belt. Just I just thought about. You know, but the next next opponent, next opponent, that's all I ever thought about. Yeah. But it's a legacy as well, like you said, from the, the to be the first ever kind of Pakistani, yeah, win yeah to, to win that is amazing, mate. I yeah. know, so hundred percent. So that was that was that was a good thing for me, you know. Yeah, for sure. So let, let's talk about that fight then. Uh, like I said, I'm not like I don't know too much yeah. about boxing, but obviously I know you are coming into the studio, so I watched actually the full fight. Right. Very controversial uh-huh. to to say the least. So this is your only defeat that's in boxing. Right. And it was a it was a split decision. It was split. So one judge gave me to to me, then two judges gave it to him. Okay, because yeah, even like looking up the fight online, yeah. everywhere says that that is very yeah, very right. controversial. So give give me your opinions on on how the fight went. Then you know what the first round obviously I could pick and buff that. You know I thought I don't make the mid rounds and and uh, maybe that maybe up to tenth maybe and he won maybe the last two one two rounds, and um, you know he kept holding. I, I thought. I thought obviously he should have had more points tucked it off him, and um, but I thought I won the fight by a few rounds, you know. I I would agree with you. You know, and yeah. uh, just uh, but I was, I was just in his home show, and uh, they obviously brought me into his home show, and and uh, I had to go obviously box, you know, I mean, because they put the money up, and obviously I got paid well for, it and um, so I've just uh, I've just unfortunate, I mean, how th- that fight ended. And were you, were you, the both of you coming in with no defeats? No defeats and uh, no defeats and both were undefeated and and he was a Cornwall champion, I was a British champion. So that's why the fight was really big. Seeing up in Scotland, it's rare to have that, mm-hmm. very rare. I'm talking about you never get that, by the way. Him having the Cornwall and the British belt. Yep. So these are the major belts, mm-hmm. the the belts, belts you can have in, um, in Britain. And um, so yeah, I had that. So that's why the fight became such a big fight. And um, that's where we end up boxing each other, you know. Now, let me ask you about this as well because right. I feel like with boxing you see that there's a lot of corruption in boxing why do you think that fight didn't go in your way then if it, I mean to me again from somebody that isn't yeah. like a, a big boxing fan that knows a lot about boxing to me it was clear that you won that fight like obvious that you won that fight I think it's probably because it was home it's just, it was his home show so I was boxing in his home show it wasn't, I wasn't under my promotion it was under his promotion at that time, it was MTK. Mm-hmm. Obviously, that's that's resolved. But I was under his, that show, and maybe because of that, I would probably say, you know. And and uh, were you maybe like were you the the underdog coming into the fight, or you were both pretty equal? No, to be honest, I was uh, the favored by the okay. bookies. I was favored by the bookies, you know, and um, and the but it's uh, it just but obviously things that was his whole show, and he sold more tickets, which I was only allocated so many tickets, and there was a lot of reasons, you know, what I mean. A lot of reasons behind it. A lot of people, a casual part, people won't understand. But I was, uh, I should have been the favorite because I was a champion. I had the major belt. I should have gone to first walk and I should have walked out second. But everything was against me. You know what I mean? And um, but that's maybe the reason I maybe <laughs> didn't get the decision. You know what I mean? And how how does that how does that feel though? Like knowing that you're on this unbeaten streak, right. knowing that you've won the fight as well. How does that then feel like, after the fight? How do how do you deal with that? How do you react to that? What do you mean after I get beat or after after you, uh, after you find out that obviously right. the, the the decision goes his way? So after that you hear that you've obviously you've been training your ass right. off for this fight and you know you come away from it confident that you've right, won. Yeah, to yeah. then hear that, how does that? How do you react to that? You know, at the time obviously I was gutted. I mean, it's just my first TV as a professional, and at the time I never had a promotional contract, so I wasn't with any major TV contract like Sky Sports or BT Sports or anything. I wasn't with them, so. 
I was like, bloody, I need to sell over again now. I've lost my belt and I've I've not got anything to fall back on. I'm talking about his promotion wise. So that was difficult, you know what I mean, for me. Yeah. So I was like, ah, bloody, I need to start over again. So I need to start from scratch, start building up again. And obviously you've spoke already previously yeah. in, the, in the podcast today just about that mindset. So yeah. was it a case of you were kind of sitting about maybe feeling a bit sorry for yourself after the defeat or was it in your mind you were like, right, okay, this has happened, that's annoying, but it's time now just to get back to business? You know, at the time, uh, I was like, I was gutted, you know what I mean? I was really, really gutted. I was like, where do I go from here now? But obviously my manager is like, listen, don't worry, I'll get something off you, you know, and uh, I got paid well, obviously that, e- that is the pain a wee bit, yeah. you know? <laughs> I got paid well, so that is the pain, and uh, a week later, Eddie Hunt contacted my manager, Eddie Hunt, mm-hmm. and uh, he's like, I want to sign, I'm looking to sign cash for you know what I mean? And that was Eddie Hearn, that, that was Eddie Hearn, so he, must, he was watching the fight, and, uh, and uh, he was like, I wanna, I'm looking to sign cash for you so see within a week or 10 days, we, well, sorry, I think it's two weeks later, three, four weeks later, sorry, we went to and signed, you had a meeting with us and uh, I was I was signing a promotional contract and that was the next stage of my career now. Yeah. I'm getting to T V now. Like I'm talking T V all over all over um UK. Yeah. Like Sky Sports basically. Before I was just boxing on BBC Sports in mm-hmm. Scotland. You know, you're only gonna get people up here watching it. Yeah. And uh I was walking, I was boxing on maybe Box Nation. That was another T V that was in a big platform, so but when I signed Eddie Hearn, that took me to the next level, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. so that, so I didn't actually, because I wanted to speak uh, to you about Eddie Hearn, but I didn't realise it was so kind of close after the fight. Uh, it was just uh, it was three weeks later. And so that would obviously make you feel better as I well, did, yeah. You know, and I was like, oh, thank God, I'm getting signed with a big promotional contract now. Big promotional TV contract, I'm going to end up getting one, and mm-hmm. he gives a three-fight deal, so... So that that thing that worked out really great, good for me, you know. I would say I, I would say that you deserve it, and not no, just because you're sitting here, but seriously, because again, you're on that unbeaten streak. And no, although it's annoying if somebody maybe googles you and they see your record and no, you've got that one defeat, yeah. but people know who the, who the real winner no, was. That, yeah, and then of course you've got that kind of silver lining there with that. So right. let me talk to you about Eddie Hearn because right. Eddie Hearn said that you were the brightest young star in world boxing. That's right. And how how does that feel? And obviously you've kind of briefly mentioned how it all came about. So did Eddie Hearn just get in touch with you and say, listen, I want you to sign with me? So it wasn't me. He deals with my manager. I've got a manager, mm-hmm. Ian Wilson. He he used to manage my is it, is it Ian Wilson? Ah, Ian Wilson. Manager? I've, uh, I've met Ian a few times just through, through the gym and stuff. He's right, a good so guy. He, he managed my career. So he's had me from my first fight to my last fight. Oh, has he? Yeah, so I really he, like Ian. And I'm really close with Ian. And, um, it's like family to me and... Uh, he contacted him also. He's like, listen, I'm looking to sign cash. Look, and we'll come down. I'll, I'll send you over a deal, a three fight deal, the money, everything. And, and obviously, he sat down, spoke over me, everything. You know, and he's like, what do you think? You're happy with that? He was happy with that. So, you know, and uh, then this became more exciting for me. You know what I mean? Another exciting part of my life now started again. A new chapter in boxing, which I was getting all excited. You know what I mean? And uh, I was just, it was great for me. I can even, Jenny, I can see it on your face, like your was, face you know, is lighting up when you're uh, talking about it. I was like, hey, you work, so, so I'm going back to now, I'm amateur, the stories are told, you know. Look, I've, I've started from, you know, I've, I've immigrated from Pakistan to here, you know what I mean, and look where I'm at my platform, you know what I mean, what stage I'm at, you know, and I've dedicated my life, gave up work, and, and I'm like that. It's, uh, you know, it was really, I, I was really grateful when I ended up with that position I was in, you know. Yeah, but let, let's be honest, like the odds were probably against you, weren't they? You know, no, a, a young yeah. Pakistani coming no, over I, and immigrating into the UK. and no, 100%. I, even finding boxing at such a young age as well. But again, I think the reason that you've got such a smile on your face is because you're probably proud of the, the hard work that you put in because you've sacrificed a lot growing up and you've, you know... No, 100%. Because I always say, I've just been lucky, you know I mean? I stuck at it. Because it was going to easily get... You can easily just lose focus, you know what I mean? That's not work. I, I wouldn't say uh, that. Well, no, you know, I wouldn't say that. What well, it is, but I just stuck at it, you know. I've just I've just kept my mind in the game and I've just stuck at it. I was I was very lucky, just kept I've kept on going, you know what I mean? I think I think there's a, a certain bit of luck involved in any situation right. in the sense that yeah, it can maybe take you in certain directions. However, don't let that take away yeah, from you and your right, no. you and your hard work and your yeah, dedication. Because that's the reason, obviously, that you've got to the position. It's got, uh, in my opinion, it's got nothing to do with luck, no, anyways. No, no, no. So, wh- when was the first meeting with it? Did you meet Eddie Helm kind of in person then after the contract was signed? Or? We did. We went down to his house in Brentwood, well, the house he grew up in. Is that in Essex? It's in Essex. Just it's in Brentwood. So mm. it's in Essex, right, it's okay, just yep. outside of London, just mm-hmm. maybe a couple of miles outside of London. We went to his house that he obviously. He grew up in, no, he, that's his office now. It's a big, big house, you know, and that's the house we went into and sat down, we spoke to him. He's like, this is a fight I'm going to give you, you know, main contract. And 
I signed the contract went over him and that was it you know is, is, uh, was Eddie Hearn's dad a boxing promoter as well he was that? so he built he basically built Matchroom uh-huh. Matchroom the platform if you yep. know what it is it was snooker darts he built everything right okay his dad, Barry Hearn, oh, I, didn't, I didn't actually so know that Barry, Barry Hearn built everything oh. so he's, he was the he was the one that obviously see what Eddie is it's because his dad you know what I mean yeah, yeah. Obviously, no, it's not because his dad but he's, his dad's built Matchroom you know what I mean yeah. Eddie Hearn just took it to the next level yeah and uh, with the boxing but Barryhan was the one that kicked off Matchroom. I didn't see. I didn't know that because me and my dad were, were talking the other day. Um, he's been driving me about everywhere because right. I broke in my really? elbow, and we had talked sport on, and they were talking about the uh, the Fury and Ganu right, fight, um, and they were talking about Eddie Hearn. And my dad was mentioning right. that his Eddie Hearn's dad was also a boxing promoter, right. but I didn't realise that. I think how old are you, Adam? And how? Uh, twenty three. Sorry, twenty three. So I think uh, obviously, well, I knew of course because Eddie Hearn would tell me. I think. His dad was just chucking boxing as I was coming in. Okay. So he, his boy was just taking over, I think. Right. So I'll prob- I, that's the reason I probably know about Barry Hunt. Yeah. And um, that's the reason, because he was, he, was, he was Sky Sports before Barry, uh, Eddie Hunt came along. Okay. He was the man that was doing everything I'm in. Yeah, that's interesting. I didn't, I didn't know that at all. And right. what was, what is a... Uh, what is Eddie Hearn kind of like then face to face because I, I love Eddie Hearn I uh, think he just seems like a top guy like obviously he's done very well for himself but it, it doesn't I don't know it just seems quite down to earth no, quite authentic is, yeah. you know what he is he's a he's a genuine person you know and uh, I tell you what see one thing that strikes out everything is work ethic see he could be here one day here we could be sorry he could be here one this today he could be here next country be in two countries within a day Yeah, that's what type of work ethic is like he's called you know what I mean and he's always he's always in the go, whatever he's doing. He's always in the phone. He's always got something. His life's always in the fast lane. Yeah. He's always got something coming up. It's one show after another. Another show. It could be different countries. You know what I mean? So he's got his work ethic second to none. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, that's the reason he'll be he'll be so successful with everything that he does. And you know, and obviously he's given up time. Obviously, he probably tells you he probably gives up time with the family, but. But his work ethic is ridiculous, you know. Yeah, crazy. Yeah, hi. And Eddie Hearn then as well, during lockdown, right. he, I remember seeing it all over um, like social media, right. he was doing the boxing in his garden. That's right. Did I, you fight in that? So I, I boxed in the last one before I retired. Mm-hmm. That was in 21 in August. And I that bo- genuinely was in his that, back so garden? That, that was his big, that was his house, you know what I mean, when he grew up in. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, that, that was my last fight in his match in his garden, so... I was, that was a great experience to be honest. That yeah. was a great experience. I won my WBC international trial there and uh, yeah, that was a great experience. That was my last fight off my contract that I signed with him. Then I was going to get a new contract, you know. Mm-hmm. That, that, that's crazy that you won that title in Eddie Hearn's back garden. Yeah, no, well. it was, it was, to be honest, it was a great, it was a great setup, you know. And, uh, oh, I've seen it, yeah. It was, it was a great setup. Yeah. I've even been there. It's great. It was a great setup and it was, you know, and um, it's uh, it's one of the things that I ticked off my boxes. You know, I mean, I wanted to do, you know. Yeah, no, that's amazing. It's also I don't know if you know about see Dana White, obviously the, the UFC, yeah, the head of the UFC. Obviously, when COVID was first going on right. and the, the world was locked down, right. every sport came to a standstill. Right. But he was the guy that was like that. Nah, I want to keep this shit going despite all the COVID. And then he moved to that fight island right, yes, yeah. in Abu Dhabi. So he was still putting on UFC fights. So it's kind of like a similar so, situation. Sorry, that's what I'm just about to get back to. So mm-hmm. that, I was very lucky, Adam. So I signed that contract with Eddie before COVID hit. So I was lucky. So I, I went in boxing through COVID. See, when I was signed, I would never end up boxing COVID. That's crazy. So I would have, I went up maybe two years, just went stale in my career. So I was very, very lucky too. Signed the contract before COVID hit. See, if I never got Eddie Hearn, I would just be on the stool, like in shelf. That's for maybe two years and came back in what? I think COVID opened up in 2021. Yeah. End of tra- so that's yeah. when I really would have had my next fight. That's So I was very, very lucky. You know, I had my three fights within COVID. Yeah. You know, and uh, see, if I never got that, I would have just been sent above for maybe two years, you know. that That's mad. So so other boxers were then just kind of sitting about during that period, yeah? I have to be honest, a lot of boys chucked it because of that. Retired or maybe I took them out. I mean, or maybe boys went back into work, and that's it. Just never because you can't step off for two, two years. You know, I mean, just waiting for because you never knew when COVID was gonna end. What did you? Mm-hmm. When COVID, even the first time, you always thought it was a month, two months, and time just went on and went on and went on. And um, see, boxing was affected by, by that. You just couldn't fight, and uh, so you just uh, you decide what do we do? What do we do now? Yeah. You know that's amazing. That's amazing. I didn't actually realize that it was like during that time and nobody else was really boxing. And no, obviously, right. you get given that contract at that time as well. It was just I think it was in December or January I got the contract. Yep. 
and of COVID, what 2020 or the I think it was 20, yeah. 19 or 2020 yeah, 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 1920 then I think COVID hit within 2-3 months like, yeah, it was like February I was, March meant, I was actually mental box before COVID hit oh, well, I, yeah. like, I think it was a week or two weeks before in Newcastle okay and uh, two weeks before COVID started really kicking off mm-hmm. things started obviously it was I think three weeks before things started getting really mm-hmm. and we were thinking things would be alright then I think things started getting serious things started shut down and I think we knew it was just gonna yeah, this was gonna be it. You know, I mean, then we thought it was only gonna last for a couple of weeks, maybe a month. I know, but that, that's what I was gonna say. I remember <laughs> sitting with that Boris Johnson announcement uh, the TV, and he's like, "It's only a few weeks, guys." Uh, few and weeks then and before we know, it was like two years, <laughs> well, a year and a half, and we were stuck in COVID. You know, such a strange time thinking uh, back to it as well. And I don't know, it must be even stranger for you thinking back to it. It was, you know, and uh, see you in the gym. I done everything behind closed doors. You know, I mean, the gym and see when we went down. I won London Cup three times, so we had to take the train down. That train was empty. You had to wear COVID marks. Then you had to isolate your room for 24 hours to get your um, your test, um, your COVID test coming back. And uh, then you only had to stay with the hotel for four or five nights. Yeah, it was in the, the hotel. Bubbles, the so bu- the bubble eyes. Mm. So you had to stay in the hotel. You couldn't leave it with your opponent walking about with, around you. Know? <laughs> That's such so a... So it, uh, it was a great experience as well, that. Yeah. And so then your fight in Eddie Hearn's back right. garden, is that the last fight that you've done? That was my last fight. So I had a fight in um, Wembley mm. Arena. That was my first fight. I found, I think, November. I found Kelly t- uh, K-Tail's undercard. And then I fought in April in 2021. Then I had a fight in August. And that was my three-fight contract. And that was my last fight in fight camp. So after the after the last fight with the contract with Eddie Hearn, was there then talks of keeping the contract going? So that so that, that was a part I was going to get into. And uh, so we came up, my manager spoke to Eddie Hearn I'm on a contract now, so I, the balls in Marco, I decide how much money I get paid and that. So my manager came with a, a life changing money deal fight, you know, and uh, and um, then he came up with saying it was two fights. I was sorry, it was four fights or three fights. It was, I was meant to, uh, the two fights we agreed on the money. Then after that, it, you're open market, you can decide what you want to get paid, mm. you know. And the first fight I was meant to find Vegas, and uh, that was in December, I think, or November. Then I was meant to find Hydro in April. In, um, 2022 then uh, so that was that was the three fight contract I had okay. and after if I won them two fights then I can decide then I can negotiate more money yeah it's like in, on your kind of terms, terms like the, balls right. in so your two court. Fight, the two fight I had a four I think three or four fight contract whatever it was then after two fights if I keep if I had won them then I can negotiate more money if mm. I didn't obviously I think get a close or something you only get so much money so then no and then obviously something heartbreaking happened. So in January two thousand and twenty two. So so I was twenty twenty two, I right? I think it was sixth of December, January I announced it, but see before I tell you what, I, I knew this way, way back. Okay. So I, I didn't I had my I had my fight in August. Then then I went for medicals. I don't know. So medicals, let me explain that. So it's eyes, bloods and brain scan. So something something came change my brain scan. Mm-hmm. It was a change in my brain scan from last four or five years. You know, I mean, every year you get a brain scan, they check your brain is everything right because you get punched in the head. Yeah. So the moment a change came up, and they went to advise me to go see a specialist. You know, I mean, then obviously I don't pay a lot of money. You know, I mean, and uh, the first uh, person I think I paid, I don't know what it was, some ridiculous money. And uh, we done a test with them, and he's obviously done through I- IQ test, whatever it was, and I think a change um, says something's no. Something's not right in your one your IQs, you know what I mean? Your memories or whatever. Then I got a second opinion, and I think, uh, then it came up again. Then I went to see a personal doctor that I know through boxing. He advised me, listen, you better, things are things are not, things are looking right here. You better just call that day, you know what I mean? And um, that was it, you know what I mean? My manager said, that's enough, you know, boxing anymore. And, they, and um, that was, I never got my license, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> So when when you then went to see that kind of specialist, uh, so then they advised you, they said, listen, your your health's kind of in full tact right now. No. Let's walk away from this whilst, whilst it is intact. So was that then basically saying you need to stop this? It, uh, it wasn't so, more a choice, no? No, so basically, so you have to pass your medicals to get your licence. So it's a licence you get, it's a British Bull Control licence. Yep. You need to get that. See, without your medicals, you can't get that. Mm-hmm. So I never passed my medicals, so they never granted me that. So that doctor needed to do Past my like obviously I go report but well, he never did he never got a good report and they see but they have specialists in the British Port Control they read it and they says listen he's not gonna he don't grab the license you know what I mean and uh, that was it I never got my, grab my license 
But I knew this way back. I think I retired in November or something. I think been November or end of November. But that was difficult, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, obviously, I was quiet about it. I didn't tell anybody until... In January. I, until time. January, and I had to announce it. So I went through Christmas. All my friends were like, oh, we're looking forward to the next fight. And uh, that was difficult, you know. I had to keep it quiet, really quiet, until just announce it, you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, could I ask then, what was it then? And was it something in your brain that... Were they basically saying if you can... Like, if you repeatedly got punched... Then it, can, it can lead to long-term problems later in life, you know what I mean? Whether it's memory or something like that, you know, it can lead on to that, you know? Mm-hmm. But, because that's, uh, the brain scan determines, now things have been a bit different now. See, 20, 30 years ago, brain scan, the MRIs weren't great. There was no MRI, so boxing, all you did was just get your bloods and I think it was your eye test. And that's all you got, I think, 34 years ago. And, um, you know, and now they've obviously... St- Think things are more stricter now than they were because health and safety now. Yeah, you're looking out for the focus. There's nothing good again. There's nothing comes good out again. Punching the head does it no. really? Because no. obviously you probably been reading stuff about the CTE about football's head ball and head in the ball and the rugby players and that them getting CTE in their life. So this is uh, the reason that we bit we bit tight on things, you know. And see the see the thing that kind of flagged up and your and your medicals in the head. Had that changed then from your previous medical the year before? So it, it, was it something that happened in that year that it was getting worse and worse? Or? No, I, I think it's we change. It's the same that we change, and obviously they just go. But then they have to see a specialist and they see whether obviously this go the term off the specialist see whether if something has changed. You know what I mean? And uh, he obviously advised me. You know, it could be wrong. You know, what I mean, don't get me wrong. It could be wrong. I'm only gonna know when later on life. You know what I mean? Yeah. Whether I'm gonna. Do, uh, pick up something or not, you know what I mean? But boxing is like that, you're not going to come in, you're not going to come in boxing and just get out with your health intact, you know what I mean? You might, some, a lot of boxers don't, you know what I mean? Some, the guys who get out later in life, they're the ones that have got the right time, you know what I mean? So I think, I think obviously the, the most difficult part yeah. would be, you do this three con, three fight contract with right. Eddie Hearn, goes amazing, win all the fights, and then you've then got all of these big fights lined up, to then get told that news, like, how how do you actually cope with that? Because I remember I seen you in the gym after the announcement yeah, right. and I'm like, how is he in the gym? I feel like I'd be away sinking myself in a bottle of vodka or something yeah, like right. that, you know? Like, how how do you deal with that? It's so it was, di- see at the beginning it was difficult, but I just go on with it, you know what I mean? I was like, guy, listen, it's, it's, uh, if God wants you to have something, he'll give it to you. If he doesn't, you know I mean? It's probably best for you not to have it, you know? Obviously it's probably done me the world of good now. I'll look back at it because I would end up, see if I kept on going, I would end up getting hurt you know, and uh, I would end up getting hurt or something later on life. So it's good I go out at the right time, you know. Yeah. And uh, I just, you know, it's, I just dealt with it, you know. I just, you know, don't get me wrong, it's not easy, you know, I mean, I'm like a human being. But you just, I think you just have to live with it, you know. I mean, as time goes on, it just becomes a long distance memory. Yeah. At the time, obviously, I was like, ah, oh, I can't believe I retired, you know. <laughs> did, it, did it feel, did, did it generally feel like your kind of world was crashing down, though, in the sense that, like, this is what I've chose to do, I've dedicated myself to this. You had a massive future, I, obviously, in it as well, the Hydro rematch, and then, oh, bro. I, I, I know, so I, that's, that's obviously everything that, I'm like, uh, I could have been, I could have, I could have been someone, you know, I could have made it, you know what I mean? <laughs> I was like, I could have made it and done, and I just, I always see, I told her, oh, just give me two more fights, I'll chuck it. They didn't even give me that stage, you know what I mean? Because I think it was life, it was just life changing money for me, mm-hmm. you know? And, what uh, was that? The, the, the two fight contract, um, off the money he gave it, offered us, it was life changing money for me. And uh, that could have set me up, you know what I mean? Really well. Obviously, I mean, plenty through box but this would have obviously took me to the next level you know man looked uh set me up a bit more but just uh just unfortunate i just never got the next uh got my license you know yeah okay and then how long did it kind of take you to to kind of not adjust to that but obviously you've just been told a massive bit of news so what what was the next steps and what did you what did you have in your head that you're like right okay this is what i'm now going to go on and do so I just took my time, you know. I mean, I just I took I eased things in, you know. I mean, but obviously, I just took my time and uh, I was just just take your time what you do. Don't rush into anything, you know. And uh, that's all I don't have. Just just take your time what you want to do, and um, you know, and uh, just give yourself because I've been in the gym for what thirteen odd years, well, twelve years in my life in the gym. So I've been in the gym for the last. I've no love. So I've now went on holiday since I was fourteen. A boy, I've just been in the gym since I took boxing at age of fourteen. 
And I've just been that was my first time holiday in January just there. Was it? I uh, so that's sometimes see so my life's just been in the gym all my life. So I told you Christmas, New Year, well it was uh some old I was always in the gym. And uh so that just once that stops now the things you were chasing that just stop. You don't you don't need to chase that anymore. So so that was a bit difficult. Now I had to be in the gym the night and I never had to run anymore. So I just had to take my time and decide what I want to do now. You know, and uh so that just um so that was a bit bit you know, I had to come up with something what I wanted to do, you know. Was it was it also nice as well to be able to do certain things that you wouldn't have been able to do if you were in your career, like going on holiday? Was it was it nice having that because, time or was it not? Nah, it just gets born and eventually. Like, see, when right. going out in food or something, because I wouldn't, I only do that after, after my fights, going out, eating something and that. But when I was in training camp, I was never doing that. But, you know, you get sick or you get bored of it. No, that's not exciting. I mean, you've got to train up. Train, wake up, get up, morning, run, again in the gym at night time and train towards something. But, you know, that's no, you eventually get bored of doing that type of things. You, know, you can do that so much, eating, whatever it is, even food. See, food is, see, even the smallest things, because you're making weight, you can't do a weight that you shouldn't be at. So I was, I was at, I walk about 61, 62 kilo. Right, okay. So I would get down to 53.5. Well, you would go down, I, down to 53 kilo? I, no, it's 50, so, you know, and um, see, even the smallest things that you don't even enjoy, they taste like, they taste like desserts, you know what I mean? Like even like porridge, yeah, with a bit of honey on it, that used to taste like dessert. And uh, see after, see now food doesn't even taste great anymore. No, no. It's just, uh, but see when you're in boxing, food tastes brilliant. Honestly, it does because you're always making weight. You're always making weight. You can't, eat, you can't eat crazy. You can't just fill yourself to do your max. You know. Yeah, whereas, whereas now it's like the reins have kind of been taken off you, so you've got that freedom got there. Free, you can go in the cupboard and pick up biscuit, but yeah, you, you know, I mean, you can go down there. There's a chocolate bar, and the, and the st- um, petrol station's picked up and buy and eat it. You yeah. couldn't do that before. You had to set, set meals pl- plans at the time of the day. You had to do that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So even after a fight, you had two, three weeks off. You can enjoy yourself, but that tap period just goes like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, that period just goes like that. That's crazy to see the the commitment, though, and, and the dedication. You know, I just and, uh, like I say, you've got you've got show. Cause yeah, the sport person, you've got show career. You've no go forever. Yeah, and some people are lucky that to go in there early thighs or maybe mid thighs to keep a long career going. But see, in reality, you've not really go long. Yeah, and being a sport person, you know what I mean, you've really got at the top. You've really got a good few years in that. Then and that's it. You know, what I mean, whether you make yourself or not, make something out of yourself. You, you know what I mean just coming down to you by how much commitment you put and sometimes you do need a bit of luck you know what I mean yeah you need to come at the right time yeah no 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 I get you I get you and I want to talk to you about more kind of what you're doing just no. now in a wee second just whilst we're on the topic it's right. something that's always very interested me just when you talked about the weight cut there right. how how is it cutting weight because there might be some people listening to this that don't realise like what you need to do so you're saying that you usually walk about what 61, 62 kilo now I'm probably about 61, 62 kilo I, and you had to drop down to 53 kilo 53 and a half I, yeah, 53 and a half which half, is like, it's 8 stone 6 what, what's that in, what's that in pounds you know, 118 like, 118, 118 pounds nine, mate that is a light that is very very yeah, light so enough. and I think what people don't understand then is as well say you are 100 kilo mm-hmm. Right. It's going to be way easier for you to go from 100 kilo to 90 kilo because you're obviously a lot heavier. Whereas right. when you're that light, it's very, very hard and to no, then cut you know weight. What? See, the amount of weight I loads probably for a big guy, I spoke about 14, 15, 14 or 10 kilos between that much and more. You know, and uh, what were the methods that you used to, to do that then? So, Alec, obviously, you know, Alec Wheeling, the pro life, used yes. to give me a diet plan. And uh, his I, diet plans would be and strict. His, <laughs> and his one's strict, so it's no five, six days a week. It's no, or you can have a cash, you know, I have a wee biscuit of the day and I have a wee chocolate bar protein bar. It was just that's it, at seven days a week. And and uh, you should be losing this much every week, you know. I mean, monitor your weight, I monitor your weight every week. So I'll do that leading up to a fight. And obviously, I'll phone him up, listen, this one I'm where I'm at. And he would always keep me right, you know what I mean? Because I don't really have a clue about diet. I do and I don't. You know yeah. What I mean? You've got, I think, see, when you're in a fight and you've got a weight cut, you need to have somebody there because I feel like if you are trying to coach yourself, you're very lenient on yourself maybe. Yeah, and you think, oh, I'd maybe, I'd maybe be all right to have yeah, that. Yeah. Whereas if you've got somebody there that's been like, no, you need to stick to the strict diet. No, 100%. And see, it is, it's my, my knowledge of weight, cut, weight cutting and making weight is no, it's not great. You know what I mean? I don't know. I'm not like Alec. He's, he's been in the industry for, what, 20, 30 years now? Or even longer. He knows we know what best into tactics are. I always probably think of doing wall loading, if you know what that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. just see, I don't think that's a good idea, but he would say, just you know the best idea, just cut weight at a time. And that's the best way to do it because you need performance in the day. So, so 
see to cut weight then was it just pure diet you didn't do I know you obviously no, you I didn't, I didn't, I'll be honest I never I, didn't never I never done crazy cuts I never oh, did, did you know no, right, right. honestly I was just I was that strict that see on the week of the fight I would always be about a kilo and a half a kilo off the weight maybe a kilo and a half maybe two kilos at most I was just on the ball when I was making weight you know what I mean oh. even a night before I was maybe touching maybe a couple I see a pound over maybe right I've just because I was just leaning up to fight I was always I was very very strict you know so you were in the you were in the sense then that even when you weren't fighting Aye. and you you weren't necessarily cutting for weight you knew not to go outside of the boundaries Aye. because you know that it would make the weight cut harder so at I the knew time. What, what weight I should stop at see if I see if I had my fight I pulled the next after my fight I pulled maybe about 4 or 5 kilos after my weight I would pull about 4 kilos on after my weigh and mm. I go into the fight so I put about 4 kilos on and uh, see after the fight I've had the fight now I can enjoy myself a wee bit and I knew as soon as you start turning 60 now alright now cut off and I start get back in the runs now and start get back in the gym start watching your weight yeah. so I was about 6 kilos I start a bit panicking now I never go up to like 10, 15, 11 I, now, I would never do that you yeah, know what I mean yeah. Because I think you're doing damage to your body doing that by... Oh, you, oh you know, yeah, and, uh, mate, yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I've never really hit 15, 16, 17. I've never done that ever, right, ever. Okay. Even though I'm not a big guy, but I've never hit that. I can do it, don't get me wrong. It's not difficult putting the weight on. Yeah, yeah. But we'll get would, black, they're still in and then you can try it. I can, I can put the weight on quickly, yeah. you know what I mean? But it's not difficult putting the weight on. It's kind of the way that's a difficult part. Right, okay. That, that's interesting because, again, not to pure talk about Conor McGregor yeah. all the time, but I remember watching a lot of Conor McGregor's yeah. weight cuts. I don't know if you've seen Conor McGregor's no, weight I. cuts. He genuinely looks like a completely different person. It's scary. See, when he right. was fighting at 155 pounds compared to what he was usually walking about at, walking about, he looked normal. And then see, when he cut weight and seen him, he genuinely looked like a different guy. His face, it all yeah, changed. Know, and just, he looked like he was dying, honestly. So you, uh, I thought every fighter had to go through these. No, it's, it's a false illusion. I mean, boxing's, boxing's a wee bit different. You don't need to do, you don't need to do that boxing. See, if you're good enough, you're good enough. Okay. You don't need to be a bigger that weight, you know what I mean? And, and that's what people are doing, a weight, weight advantage on top of that guy. But see, you're good enough, you're good enough. You don't need to worry about the weight. Okay. Just be at the right weight and do the weight right. That's that's all that matters, you know what I mean? Yeah. No, that's interesting. It's just I've always seen those methods and it's like see, people... UFC, you can do uh, it, but not in boxing. Right, okay. But you see it's more grappling and yeah. you're putting the weight on top of him. But see, boxing is a bit different. Right, okay. See, you couldn't do what they do in boxing. Yeah. Because you're getting punched in the head for 12, 10 rounds and it comes a wee bit dangerous as well. Yeah. Because yeah. obviously, see, as soon you start losing weight, the last bit, the work comes out of your brain. That's how boxers end up with brain injuries and, you know, you probably see them going injuries and that's, that's how they end up, you know. So you got to make sure you do the weight right, so, which is dangerous. Yeah. You got to make sure you do the weight right because bodybuilder just going up to a stage and you're performing but seeing boxing you're getting punched in the head so yeah. make sure everything's right you know yeah uh, you need to do kind of both you need you to do weight but then also you've got to perform as well perform. so it's not a case of I have got to I've made weight now that's it I've, you know I've cut 20 odd kilos I'm perfect now I'm ready to fight now you need to make sure you do it right okay. and perform on the weight yeah no, that's really interesting. I didn't know that, mate. Yeah, and let, let's talk about what you've got going on just now. Then, so obviously you you announced your retirement yeah. from boxing. What what was the plan then going forward from that point? So I was I was looking at maybe my you know what I go into the amateur boxing. I started helping kids just uh, doing that. You know what I mean? And uh, you know I do a bit of personal training as well. See, after I had that mindset, I'm just gonna do this as well. Like, again, to the field I know. So I tried teaching kids boxing amateur. Mm -hmm. Done that for. Again and a half just there. I just stopped it because it was coming a bit too much. I do personal training, just teach people who want to learn how to box. And uh, I go into school sometimes and teach, obviously, kids boxing as well. And uh, I do a bit of charity work outside as well, you know. So, yeah, so just keep myself busy doing anything that I can, you know, I mean, possible. So it's mainly kind of coaching roles then? Like coaching, you know, because that's, that's my field, you know, I mean, that's my trade, I would say. Yeah. You know, and, um, and I can teach you boxing, you know, I mean. I can educate you how to do it, you know. So could you teach me boxing? I can teach you if you want. I don't know, you yeah, know what I mean? for sure, mate. I, mate. I I've always said right I want to try boxing, and it's you know, just it's one of these uh, things that I've said I'll do it. I'll do it, and I just never have. No, but. you know what? It's, uh, it's it's a good skill to pick up. You know, I would say. Okay. say you know, we'll get some lessons, but no, done them, mate, for sure. 100%. Yeah, hundred percent. And uh, then, so uh, what you're doing just now? Then are you still uh, kind of working with Ian Wilson at St Andrews, or so we we, we do our work with still Ian Wilson. So we, we look out for talent in Scotland that wanna. Turn over, you know, I mean, he was asked, what do you think about him? And, and obviously, we just sat down and discussed, you know, what do you think about him? And I would obviously tell me, I think he's a fight to sign. I mean, go ahead with him, you know, like, he'll he'll be one for the future. So so I still do that with Ian Wilson. I mean, I attend all his, his professional um, events. So I st I'm still moving the box, you know what I mean? But 
I'll see how long I'll keep that up for, you know. I always say, um, she wants to retire from boxing. Sometimes people just don't get back into the sport. And I'll see how long I'll keep in the sport, you know. And uh, how are you feeling now? How are you feeling with everything going on? How are you feeling with life, your situation after everything that's happened? How, no, how I think it's, I think that's in the past. You know, I'm just okay. looking ahead now. You know, I don't look, okay. I don't look behind anyone. I'm just looking ahead. Yeah. See the next um, stages of my life now. Okay. You know, and um, that's it. You know, and that, 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 was, that part of my chapter is done. You know, I mean, boxing, me being a boxer, me having a good career. And that's as bad as done, you know. Okay. So I'm just looking at the next step now, whatever it's going to be. And what, what do, you, do you know in your head what the next step is or what it's looking like? Or are you just not you looking too I, far? You know, I like to go into schools and I start teaching them boxing, you know what I mean? And they educate on discipline the way I had, the way I, I done it, you know. Okay. The way I lived, I, I lived my life as growing up, you know what I mean? I like to do that, you know. And uh, at the moment, I'm I'm doing that, but I like to do that all over school, school eventually. You yeah. know, and uh, educate and how, advise them don't go down that road because that can dig, you can end up ruin your life like that do see young you're young tag you know don't pick up bad habits you know what i mean because live with you the rest of your life you know what i mean yeah no for sure that, that's amazing that you want to do a lot of work with, with kids as well i exactly. think up in scotland you'll know yourself i think there is a problem um with young people especially no, as they kind of move into high school and move more into like their teenage years you know there is a big drug problem in scotland no, 100 so drinking drugs you know and uh sometimes that will come with your life you know what i mean and I'm not talking about just uh, it become your life because you've just oh you've done it since a young kid and so do get yourself into something when you're young doesn't matter football anything I mean it doesn't need to be boxing sport again do something that keeps you busy after school because you've got a lot of time in your hands you know what I mean yeah, no, boxing you was obviously what kept me busy after school and that that just I kept chasing and chasing and before I knew I was I was an adult yeah you know and that tough part of my life was in the past, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's amazing, mate. It is, it's really good work that you want to do as well. Almost kind of telling kids not to go down that kind of wrong path and giving them something to focus on instead. Like you said, it doesn't need to be boxing. No, it could be it. anything else, you know I mean? It doesn't need to be a thing, you know? You know, it can be anything. Mart so my trainer, he advised me. So that's the reason I do it. Because my trainer was the one that took me, obviously, told me, gave me a reason why I should box, you know what I mean? So I keep away from the streets and keep in the box, you know what I mean? Because uh, I, I don't know what I would be doing if I was in boxing. You know, and uh, I wouldn't be, I was a quiet kid anyway. I was never gonna take drugs, and I'm just don't, I don't know what I'll be doing. I mm -hmm. just, I could be working, or maybe I could be doing something else, you know. Yeah. You know, and um, picking a career up, I could have a career in something else, you know, but I was very lucky I picked up box, you know. Yeah. It came to my life, you know, and it came, it became natural to me as well. Yeah. It wasn't something I had to, you know, I had to keep chasing, chasing, chasing. It just became second nature to me. All I had to do was work hard for it. Yeah. I like that. And could I ask you a couple of questions in just about boxing? No, that's fine. First of all, I want to get your opinion on the Fury and Ganu fight because right. uh, obviously that was a big fight last week that right. happened. But I was like, ah, it looks as if Fury had never even put a pair of boxing gloves on before. What do you, what do you think because happened? I never watched the fight. Oh, only, did you not? I only watched a knockdown. But me looking at Fury, I think Fury didn't train. He, do he didn't train? No, he didn't train because I think, he's, I think he thought he was going to be easy touch uh, the um, Ngannou. He thought he was gonna be easy touch, so he just probably thought, you know what, all that guys do a couple of sessions a week and unless Angano was unless Angano turned it up, but I think he never trained, you know that? Right, okay. Just, is it, sorry on you go. And I think he just never trained. I think he was getting a, a lot of money. Mm -hmm. He probably said, you know what, I'm just gonna turn up here and and um, you know, I'm just gonna turn up here and just do what I do, you know what I mean? And uh and but I think he found out well, Angano's actually all right. Yeah, man. You no. know, and uh, so Angano gave I think Angano gave him a lot of trouble. Cause I a lot of his interviews that he was doing after the fight, right. it was all, ah, this has been the, the toughest camp that I've ever done. I've trained for 12 weeks for this. Uh, it wasn't as if, like, I, I thought this was going to be easy, but you think that then maybe in the lead up he's no, been I think, uh, See, a boxer's always going to say that. He's not going to tell you, you know, say, that's the worst camp I've had. I'm, yeah. I'm injured. You know, I've had problems outside my, my child's this night. They're not going to say that. Listen, they're going to tell every lie until after the fight. He'll tell you the truth, you know what I mean? And he'll probably tell you, listen, I never trained. Yeah, because I think that obviously you were saying that you didn't watch it, but see, even beforehand, um, before they actually kind of came out and he done his ring walk, he was sitting on a big throne, the pair of them, before right. they went out to the ring. But I turned and said to my dad, and my dad said it as well. He was like, he doesn't seem right here. Like he just seemed mentally not kind of there, like all over the place. And he did. He looked quite nervous. He was. Quite. He was uh, I don't so. I don't so really tuned for that, and he probably wasn't even motivated. You know, you need a bit. Of, you need to be a nervous. Uh, no, you need to be a bit nervous going into a fight. He probably wasn't. He wasn't. He probably thought I'm gonna go in there and beat him. Yeah. But he found out. But he was, this is gonna be a long night for me. 
And could I also ask you your opinion on YouTube boxing? Or the the that's you? No, I'm gonna be honest. That's not boxing. Yeah, I'm yeah. gonna be honest. With you, that's not boxing. Yep. You know, I, I don't watch. I've never seen one of the fights. You know that. Okay. I've not seen any of the fights, but that's not boxing. They're just a bunch of guys that just wanna lace a bit of glove and do boxing. You know what I mean. And do you do you think that? It's like a mockery of the sport of boxing, or are you kind of for having these events? They can or? do it, you know what I mean? But that's not boxing. I'm going to be honest. They can do it. There's nothing wrong with it, what they're doing, but that's not boxing. You know, and uh, these guys are just putting a pair of gloves on, and they're, fi- they're, they're, they're boxing the highest level, basically. TV, everything, getting paid probably millions. Yeah, that's that's a question as well. So you've got people like yourself, right? right. They've dedicated their life to boxing, and... You know, maybe maybe there's some fighters out there that haven't really made that much money or they've not got given that break, yet you see these kind of YouTubers come in and then train for 10 weeks and get paid millions. It must feel like a bit of a... But see, this is, Adam, see, with boxing, you know, this is a fan base, you know that? So do the fan base, people who follow you. See, at the end of the day, TV only one to one thing. TV and um, the promoter world will want two things. It's people, uh, seeds from bums and, and views. And that's what it comes down to at the end of the day. You know that. See if you you can be the greatest fan in the world, but see if you can't attract any fans, you're not gonna you're not gonna get promoted. Mm-hmm. So that's what it comes down to. You need to be able to fill the arena out with your fans and get hundreds of people to you to watching you. And that see these these YouTubers, they've got hundreds and hundreds of followers, young and young kids that probably don't have a clue about box and yeah, you know, and uh, and that's uh, that's the reason they get a lot of um, they get big platforms. You know what I mean? Yeah, because you said that you hadn't watched, watched the boxing. No, I was not down. Fights, no. <laughs> you don't want to. No, honestly. I don't know, I've not seen the Yeah, you then, don't want to, man. Because I was down in Manchester three weeks ago, four weeks ago with my girlfriend, right. and it turns out that KSI was fighting Tommy Fury that night in Manchester. So we ended up just going to get tickets. Did, right. did you hear about that fight? You didn't watch. No, I didn't, I didn't it? Watch, or did you no, not even no, hear no, about no. it? That's not boxing. It's even Tommy Fury. I've not seen him fight. <laughs> I don't know whether he's a bo- boxer either. Nah, he's, he's another one, one. that I know his brother's um, Tyson. Tyson and his dad's uh, I think John. Joe, bye, bye, John, John and uh, and I think he's he's not seen really like, he, the stage he's at. I think he was on um, Love was Island. A, a Love Island. He was on Love Island, and he's off that. He's getting a big. People are, have got this eye on him, but I don't know whether he's a you know good boxer. You know that. Mate, he's in my opinion. I, I think he's he's a better boxer than the YouTubers, right? But I don't think he's. I don't know, but I think he knows though. I think he knows that he's not a good boxer because I, I went to me and my girlfriend. We just got tickets. Right. It was last night. We're like, do you know what? Why not? Big event. We'll go. And it was Tommy Fury versus. Do you know KSI? The YouTuber is he? Is he got the prime drink guy? Aye, right. yeah, yeah, so no, no, They were boxing, and it was. Awful. It was right. honestly. I I said to my girlfriend, I was like, Tommy Fury is going to batter this okay, guy because right? I'd seen this KSI, and again, I don't know anything about boxing, right. but he's right. awful technique, awful, right, right. Right. awful mate. Honestly, do you know what? See if you want to laugh when you go home, just type in KSI, KSI boxing, right? right? Yes, and you, to a professional, you'll right. laugh at it. But the whole fight, I thought Tommy was going to weather him just because of right, how right, bad right. KSI was, and oh um, mate, they were they were just clinching the whole Where's fight, not thought, doing yeah. anything for. I, can't, I think it was actually eight rounds. It was a complete and utter waste of money. It was I awful. See, yeah, it right. was awful to see. But see if you want it. See if you want to laugh. Go on and watch the highlights of it. Of oh, that fight. I, oh mate. But I would never. I would never. I don't know whether I you don't even bother yourself. Because, no, I don't. I watch boxing. Boxing. Yeah, coming, yeah. And, uh, okay. I'm one of the ones that we see that that watches pure boxing. Yeah. Okay. Even fan that Fury fight. I didn't watch that. Yeah. Oh, know, then, then Ganu. I know because it's not real as it. No, Ganu should never really beat boxing Fury really. But it's just the money. I told you, Ganu's got a big following. Bing and uh, and Fury as well, and uh, that fight should not reality happen. You know what I mean? Yeah, I like I do like in Ganu's story. To be fair, he was you know I think he was homeless in twenty fourteen or something, and he get paid. I think it was fifteen million, I yeah, believe, I, for that fight. So good, got to mean, respect it as well. Yeah, yeah he's but, came. I think he's came to a hard road. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, he has. Uh, so what what does the future then look for you? What does it look like then? You know, I will just take it day at a time. I'm see where things yeah, okay. uh, lead me into. You know what I mean? I was very lucky. Boxing came into my life, so. I'll see where things um, end up. But I'll see where I, I will in the next few years, you know what I mean? But I hope uh, it's for the best, you know what I mean? No, I'm <laughs> sure it will be, and I'm sure yeah. everything will work out. So I hope, uh, hope things work out well for me, you know what I mean? They will, they will and, indeed, uh, mate. Yeah, right, so just, I just take it a day at a time, you know? Yeah, at a time. Now, listen, thank you so much, Cash, for coming on. I really do appreciate it. Obviously, I've seen you in the gym kind of plenty of times, but we've never actually had a a kind of sit-down conversation. And, yeah, I think the the main thing to take away from this is how solid your mindset is, despite, obviously, having highs and then 
to, to going down to the lows the, the fact that you've just kept such a positive outlook in life is it's inspirational mate oh, so um, yeah I've got no doubt in my mind whatever you're doing in the future it's going to be a successful one for you Cash thanks, thanks for coming on mate I appreciate it thanks so much cheers bro thank you